for all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs. We at Trend Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trend Forwarding, we have the much needed experience, professionalism, and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping, and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250, or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9725. Dai Dawa and Interfaith Institute presents for the first time in USA Dawa and Interfaith training with education in world religions from religious professors and spiritual leaders of different faiths. This is a six month weekend course designed for brothers and sisters local, national, and international who are seeking to learn the importance of Dawa and better understanding of faith and cultures. For more information, please contact 1 800 804 0267 or 954-986-0158. You can also contact via email at alhikmat at alhikmat.com or visit our website www.alhikmat.com. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24-7 online. We are very blessed to have with us on today's show the Honorable Mohabir Anil Nanlal. He is the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs of Guyana, South America. So for viewers uh, worldwide, uh, again, Guyana is in South America. And we are very pleased to have with us in today's show the Attorney General himself, who is also the Minister of Legal Affairs. Welcome to the show, Mr. Attorney. Thank you very much, and assalamu alaikum. Uh, it's a privilege to be here, and I want to thank you very much for inviting me to be part of your platform. We are very honored to have you as a very, uh, I mean, a very great personality. Your background, your success, your achievement as the Attorney General of uh, Guyana. So, um, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, social media nowadays is very global. As you know, people all over the world look at this program. I have heard through the grassroots that Guyana is supposed to be very soon the Dubai of the Caribbean. Uh, so, we have people from Dubai and all over the world that look at this show. And I'm sure they would be very, very interested in hearing what you have to say. Some of them may want to invest in Guyana down the road after listening to your comments and what we have to say. So, Honorable Attorney General, could you share with us, um, let's say, your background? What, what motivated you to become a lawyer? Before we get into your your career and your position as a Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General, what motivated you to become a lawyer? Well, um, I come from very humble beginnings, as most Guyanese <coughs> have come. And um, I have in my family, my mother used to be a teacher, and I have an uncle who's a lawyer and um, that those were motivating factors but more importantly um, at a very young age I developed this passion to see fairness and justice in a in relationships and in society generally and um, I, I thought that law would prevent provide me with a good foundation upon which I can build to achieve uh, my aspiration of seeing a, a fairer and more just society with emphasis being duly accorded to the underprivileged and the deprived. So those are generally the motivating factors and that led me naturally into the political arena because um, having entered law, I was making a significant contribution in my humble and respectful view but i saw a greater opportunity to do so on a grander scale or i to enter 
politics. And um, I began to gravitate naturally to the political arena and I joined the People Progressive Party and um, was able to elevate myself quite quickly into the leadership of the party and then into the parliament where I've been a member since 2006. Um, in 2011, I was fortunate to be appointed the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs. And at that time, I was very young, I think 37 years, but I've been one of the youngest Attorneys General in the world. I served um, in that government until we lost office in <clears throat> May of 2015. I went back into opposition. We, I maintained my seat in the parliament. And in opposition, we worked very hard. We corrected what were identified as errors that we would have made having been in government for two decades successively. Um, there was some degree of apathy. There may have been some degree of, uh, of, 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 of overconfidence. We may have um, not have connected as we traditionally would have liked to our supporters on the ground. We may have become complacent. And in that five years, we resolved to become most focused and to correct those deficiencies. And we worked hard in the trenches, in the fields, in the villages, in the communities, in the urban centers, across the far-flung communities of our country, in the indigenous um, villages. And um, we were able to get back into government. And I was returned um, as attorney general. My party felt that I, they still had confidence in me and I was returned as Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs and I have been serving in that capacity since August the 2nd, 2020 and um, we are in the middle of budget presentation as I'm speaking to you now. We were presented um, last week our largest budget, the third budget since we were inaugurated in August 2020 and it's a third year, year of our five-year national developmental plan contained in our manifesto upon which we were elected so I, I i will i will i will interrupt and interact in between as you're talking just yes, for the course. benefit of our viewers uh, worldwide i know you said being an attorney uh that was one of the reason why you got into politics but in addition to that in addition in addition to that what were some, uh, some other reasons that would have really motivated you? Like what was happening in the country um, that you see the need to have someone like you and to have your contribution and what you can do for the country? You know, this is, this is something that may help other viewers worldwide who have the potential like you as a lawyer and attorney. And um, when they see things in their country, it may motivate them to get involved in politics because a lot of people are hesitant in getting involved in politics. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy. But, but um, you know, you made it. You made it. The youngest, youngest attorney general in the world, in your country. I mean, that is very interesting. Very, very phenomenal. So tell us what was happening and what you saw that you can change um, with your career and your background, etc. So I joined the People's Progressive Party, the oldest political party in Guyana and perhaps the Caribbean, one of the largest mass-based political parties in the Commonwealth Caribbean. And um, that party is rooted in working class politics. And I felt compelled to be part of that movement to elevate our people, Guyanese people, from the shackles of poverty, subjugation, to address the question of ethnic discrimination and uh, intrinsic and entrenched inequalities in our society. Those 
are the founding philosophy of our party and they coincide with my vision of what I would like to do or to work towards in achieving. And um, I, I joined the movement. It's, it's something that was started by the great Chedi Jagan and he was my boyhood hero and I felt that he was committed to national development and I, I am a, I'm a patriot. Um, you know, many, many thousands of people have left Guyana, as you would know. And have so I, I, I were about mark. to ask you that question. I, and that's what I'm saying. I'm yes. going to I'm going to cut here and there yes, yes. so that, again, um, it'll get it if more, um, more, more realistic as we discuss. So I have always heard that question. That Guyana is a big country. It's bigger than England in size, um, but the the population the population is is not as much as you expect because a lot of people migrated. So, what was one of the reason that the people well, left Guyana and all these you. hundreds thank of you. thousand left? Thank you for asking me that question because that helps me to put my story into perspective as well. Excellent. So we, we had, we became independent in um, May, on May the 26th, 1966. And our dreams as a young country were basically shattered by an authoritarian regime assuming governmental power. And they rigged every elections um, until 1992. And in that process, they destroyed the economy. At that time, Guyana was identified as one of the richest countries in this hemisphere. In fact, it, wa it was one of the shining um, jewelry in Her Majesty's crown in the, in the Commonwealth, in the, in the Commonwealth as well, as well as the Caribbean, of course. But it was totally destroyed by dictatorial political regimes that rigged elections to remain in office. And once you begin to travel that path, it has a whole regime of horrendous um, circumstances and events that would follow. You will have destruction of fundamental rights and freedoms. You will have destruction of the economy. You will have destruction of the productive sectors. You would have hemorrhaging of your most talented people away from the country. And you would have economic stagnation and social deterioration. And all those things happen with a complete destruction of the legal system, the political system. Parliament became a rubber stamp. They rigged elections so much that they gave themselves a two-third majority. So they could put what they want in the constitution. They imposed the constitution on, on, on the populace and the whole gamut of what everyone knows about Guyana. So, so what, that, what year are we talking years. about? What year are we talking about? How many we years ago about, are we talking about? From 1964 all the way to 1992. Wow. 20 years of dicta dictatorship, political dictatorship, repression, violence, um, political opposition being beaten, killed, Walter Rodney, an outstanding historian and political opposition was blown to pieces by a bomb. Um, a lot of politicians were locked up, jailed, etc. And we had to struggle for 28 years to get free and fair elections restored to Guyana, to get, um, to get international observers here to observe elections, to reform the system to ensure that there is mechanisms in place to guard against the institutionalized rigging, the non-participation of the army, which was used as a weapon against the people to rig the elections. And so all these things, as a child growing up, I lived under that. I was educated in a system that I, you know, you educated, you, you recognize these things, although there were attempts to, to camouflage them. And these were things that embedded in me in a very young age, or at a very young age, that I have to play a part in ensuring 
that my country becomes part of the civilized world once again. Of I think I think that I think that's sorry to disturb you again. Uh, I think that's very motivating for viewers and people of other countries because I'm sure you're aware that um, you know other countries I wouldn't like to call name for <laughs> just to be politically correct, or as they would say in other countries in the world where people face this kind of political problems etc but your involvement and your coming on board politically as a lawyer that is definitely motivating to our viewers of other countries and that should probably guide them to get involved and be of a personality like you and help to their country but um, uh, Mr. Attorney General so we have already crossed 15 minutes of talking so time just goes because it's interesting it is interesting you know I have heard a lot about those things from the grassroots but not with some authority as we are hearing from you on this show and I think a lot of people would love to hear this and um, it might motivate some of those those uh, investors abroad to come to Guyana and motivate some of the, the, the Guyanese who have left and um, are living now in Canada and America and London and other countries etc when they hear what you have to say as the Attorney General so let us go on a short break and when we come back we want to continue um, on, on, on your, your, your experience, your vision, where do you see Guyana from a financial point of view in the future, political point of view with the gold, the oil and all the different things that God has blessed Guyana with now and your leadership and your party, the People Progressive Party, where do you see the future of Guyana? So when we come back, we want to touch a little bit on that, inshallah, God willing. To our viewers out there, Again, we have been talking to the Honorable um, Mohabir Anil Nanlal, who is the Attorney General and the Minister of Legal Affairs of Guyana, South America. Stay tuned when we come back. We will continue our conversation with him. Inshallah, God willing. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuhar Rasul. بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَغْتَ رِسَالَتَهُ Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ to spread the message of the Qur'an. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Qur'an, Help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars. Ten Quran. Thirty dollars. A hundred Quran. Three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmah TV 24 7 online. Once more, it is a pleasure to have with us on today's show the Honorable Mohabir Anil Nanlal, who is the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs uh, for Guyana, South America. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Attorney General. Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure. You know, I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much from you and what you have to say because as I said before sometimes you hear some of those comments and people remarks but you don't know how true it is but hearing it from you it's really um, very educational and uh, very motivating to know where Guyana came from and where you are now and what you all have done and people like you uh, with the People's Progressive Party 
Um, so you were mentioning uh, uh, the people who left, uh, some of the things, some of the things that caused so many people to leave. So, so the repression, the joblessness, the hopelessness, the violence, the victimization, they had intense racial discrimination against Indo Guyanese, and you had things like food shortages, um, main food items were banned, wheat and flour was banned so you couldn't get roti or bread, sardines, potatoes, dal, chana, onion, But that's not, that's not the situation right now, right? No, 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 no. These things were all banned and if you were found in possession of any of these items, your vehicles could have been seized and you could have been jailed. That was the law. You were criminalized if you wanted to eat a roti or a, or a piece of bread. That's the reality. So that is what drove people out in huge numbers away from Guyana. They left Guyana by any means necessary, legally, illegally, backtrack, front track. And so you have a huge um, population in, in the diaspora of Guyanese. Um, so my, are those things are those things back to normal in the country? Are you getting everything yes, yes, back? Certainly. Certainly, but you know, after thousands of people would have left, hundreds of thousands of people would have left. They began to sponsor their family, then you have the pull factor. People want to and it's difficult to compete for Guyana to compete um, with some of these societies, the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, these are first world countries. So it's very difficult to, to, to keep, in, in particular, your trained people, educated people. So on the, the other exodus, hand, on the other the hand, um, on the other hand, Attorney General, Guyanese have done phenomenal abroad. Eh? They have, re I mean, Guyanese own so much of properties. They have excelled, and they I'm, have. I am naturally, I am naturally biased, and tell me, <laughs> but I will tell you, I will tell you that I believe that. Guyanese are among some of the most blessed people on planet Earth. And, um, you know, so my own family migrated, but, you know, I was a little more focused and I wanted to stay here. I, I, I did well in my legal practice and um, I, I, I was bent on, on staying in Guyana and traveling the, the necessary road to see economic recovery. And um, we have brought that back. Since we got into office in 1992, we inherited a completely bankrupt country, a country where more than half the population were living overseas, a country with little or no infrastructure, destruction of institutions like the parliament, the judiciary, etc. We had to build from ground zero. And, we, and, and this is without oil. And we built Guyana from that state and we brought it back to economic viability. We were the most indebted people on planet Earth per capita. We got those debts written off and paid off, and we became um, a, a fast, a con a considered to be um, a, a mi middle income developing country by um, 2011, 2015, when we left government, and that was before oil. And then, of course, oil has come, and we are now in, a, in an upward trajectory. We are rebuilding the country now in a, in a significant way. We are concentrating on diversifying the economy, not to place over-reliance on the oil industry, recognizing that it is an exhaustible resource, and also recognizing that our real potential lies in agriculture. And that's what we are developing. You would have heard the saying that Guyana uh, is supposed to be the food basket of the Caribbean. We are seriously pursuing that objective. And um, we are contributing significantly to food security in the region. We are preparing our country to export food. We are increasing agriculture in every single endeavor, livestock, sugar, rice, non-traditional crops, vegetables, fruits, and we are doing agro-processing. Central to our ability to deliver on this vision 
is to reduce the cost of power in Guyana. The cost of energy is very high, and that is what has been militating against uh, developing a, a manufacturing sector. So we are building a a, a gas to shore <laughs> project to produce natural gas. We are working on, and that's a billion dollar US project. We are working on hydropower on, on several centers across the country. We are working on solar energy and wind energy. We have a diversified energy program. You know, we are now the leading uh, seller of carbon credits um, on the world market. We have pristine forest and we are managing that. And um, so we have developed new revenue streams in addition to our gold, diamond, bauxite, sugar, rice um, revenue streams. We are now big in the production of aquaculture. And, 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 and um, of course, we are regulating the, the oil and gas industry itself. It's a mega center of economic activities. It's brand new to Guyana, so we are learning, we are training people. We have to protect Guyanese because they can easily be shoved out of the market, so we're passing legislation. And, and, and we are building some important alliances with international health centers across the world, like Mount Sinai and Northwell out of New York. They are coming to Guyana to partner with us. We are rebuilding hospitals right across the country, rebuilding schools. It, it's, it, it's a very exciting place to be. Of course, I have to, I am responsible for modernizing the, the legal sector because none of these developments can take place without the legal foundation, the legal framework in place. So we have a very, very active legislative so, agenda. So with all the, so, all the new it, development and achievement over the past uh, years, um, is it true that uh, a lot of people from Trinidad and other countries are uh, beginning to invest in Guyana? What is the status with Guyanese abroad? Are they returning to Guyana? Are they investing back in Guyana? What's happening in that arena? So, so Guyana is now one of the most attractive investment destinations in this part of the world. That is undoubted. Naturally, persons are flocking to come here, and we welcome that. Trinidad in particular because, Trinidadians rather, in particular because of its clo close proximity, similarity in culture, language, people, etc. But more significantly, because you have had a hundred years in the oil and gas industry, and you have institutions, you have companies, you have technical skill and we are with all to contribute significantly to the sector. You have international companies as well, closely aligned to the, the oil operators here, ExxonMobil um, and, and, and Hess, etc. They have their companies that are coming. That's why we have to regulate the industry to ensure that Guyanese are protected because we can easily be edged out. Um, we have mm -hmm. a strategic and very a close connection with our diaspora. They have been with us through the hard times and now the good times are here. We are ensuring that they, they are encouraged and they are, they are given all the incentives available to bring back their wealth to Guyana, to invest in Guyana. After all, Guyana is their country as well. And um, so there's a hive of activities economically, socially, infrastructurally, legally, medically, educationally, every sector is driving um, at full, on, on, on full throttle, so to speak. And, uh, um, Honorable Attorney, could you, could you, could you share with us, uh, uh, could you share with us now that you have all this success and all this God-blessed achievement, I know uh, we had mentioned maybe during the break about the crime once upon a time that existed in Guyana. Um, and as the Attorney General, you are the most ideal person to ask this question. What is the status with, the, with, with crime as opposed to what it was many years ago? One of the reason, one of the reason for people leaving Guyana was again because of food being banned by the previous government, and uh, crime was so high. What is the situation now, and what do you see it like in the future? 
so uh, as you would appreciate nothing transforms overnight yeah. it's a process so while i have outlined a hive of activities in every area of human endeavor in guyana it doesn't mean that the lives of the guyanese people are going to be transformed rome was not built in a day it doesn't mean that the social and other problems that we have faced for decades are going to be wished away and we appreciate that it, it requires work it requires planning it requires investment it requires strategic partnerships with important international and other organizations and we are pursuing that so crime crime has always been high in guyana and it continues to be a problem but only last month the commissioner of police disclosed some statistics that show that crime violent crimes have been decreased significantly in georgetown for example by 30 percent and nationwide wow. by 19 percent now that is a significant decline not experienced in the distant past or in the near past so the investments that we are making and which we will continue to make the infusion of technology training and 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 a scientific approach to crime fighting is paying off and it is one of the flagship promises in our manifesto and we will continue to work assiduously in ensuring that there is public safety in guyana and that eventually we can bring crime to acceptable level and that is one of the significant problems that we are working on and we have a national um, security strategy and a national crime fighting plan where we are installing like cameras across the country on the roadways we we have built intelligence centers equipping them with the most modern apparatus to ensure that you know we are able to monitor activities across guyana of course we have our own peculiar challenges we have a we have thousands of miles of porous borders um you have an unstable country in venezuela where you have constant unlawful migration into the country and that is posing a problem by itself um with success comes some own problems you have people from different parts of the world are also coming here so we have to increase our monitoring capabilities to manage what is taking place and these um these persons are bringing with them you know modern methods of conducting criminal activities so we have to constantly be improving our potential and improving our capability in a commensurate fashion so and, and and so that's a work in progress um we we i bring we are bringing in some people from from india and other places to equip our forensic laboratory so we so we have a forensic laboratory which is a major accomplishment we can do a lot of um chemical analysis dna testing you know that type of thing important adjunct to the fight against crime we now have to invest in getting personnel man these institutions and what 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 we are pl what uh, what we are planning to do is just don't bring them here and leave them and then when their contract expires they go we are going to work with the university of guyana to bring them into training bring them into the the, the what you call the curriculum so that they can train a whole generation of guyanese to take over so it's building resources we have a scholarship program that we have already from 2020 to now given some uh, 11,000 scholarships to study in different universities across the globe free of cost no attachment to, to the government financed by the government in all areas targeting every age group this year alone we are going to give another 10,000 scholarships so that we are educating our country educating the population we have for example about seven five star hotels under construction marriott hilton holiday inn best western um uh, different brands of the various um holiday inns and so on we have, uh, 
So we have a vibrant, expanding hospitality sector. We have to build a hospitality institute. We are working on that. We are educating our people in that sector. We are going to start an oil and gas, oil and gas training institute as a multi-million US dollar operation because we need to train people. We are, we are building a pipeline that's 160 miles long from the Atlantic Ocean to bring in the natural gas. Wow. We need thousands of welders, underwater welders. We have to build a natural plant. We are building a bridge across the Demerara River. You, you, Trinidad, you know you, what you call river, we call a canal or a trench here. <laughs> yes, Four rivers yes. are miles long. So we are building a, that's a, that's a project that will start this year. The contract has been signed. It's 165 million US. The bridge is supposed to escalate over 100 feet in the air. So, so, I mean, I could go on to talk about how many highways we are building, how many stadia we are building. I spoke about the hospitals, the new schools. So a lot I of exciting that, I, things. I, 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 I think that is really amazing and incredible. Listen, it's great. That's a blessing. It's a blessing. And uh, well, you just come here with your camera. Come with your your camera crew and, and, and video what is going on. We and you can do, do a that. whole program by itself. We will surely take uh, you up on, on that. On, on that alone. We will surely take you up on that, uh, Mr. Attorney General. As I said, Al Hikma TV director is a news editor for NBC. So it will be interesting to come well, down well. to Guyana and do a documentary on the development and the future of Guyana because we keep on hearing it's going to be the next Dubai of South America and the Caribbean. That is really incredible. But we got to go on a short break. And when we come back, um, I would really like to ask you for the benefit of our um, viewers worldwide and for myself especially, a little bit about your, your career maybe some of the technical cases that you would have dealt with as a lawyer but uh, you know that experience dynamic personality that you have as a lawyer in Guyana and um, maybe a little bit about the pros and cons of being the Attorney General of Guyana what is that like so that um, our viewers and our people worldwide can learn from your experience so to our viewers out there Stay tuned. When we come back, we will continue our conversation with the Honorable Mahabir Anil Nanlal, who is the Attorney General and the Minister of Legal Affairs of Guyana, South America, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikma TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuhar Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars. Ten Quran. Thirty dollars. A hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. And for those of you who have just tuned in, we are talking to the Honorable Mohabir Anil Nanlal, who is the Attorney General and the Minister of Legal Affairs of Guyana, South America. Welcome back to the show, uh, Honorable Attorney General. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here again. Good. So as we said before we went on the short break, 
um, this is more very personal to you now because of your personality I think your experience and your advice may help a lot of uh, lawyers out there people who are studying law who are becoming lawyers or been lawyers would you like to share maybe uh, one or two uh, technical cases that you would have had dealt with in your career maybe before becoming definitely before becoming the attorney general and then i would really love to hear your experience on what are the pros and cons of being an attorney general advantages disadvantages what is it like so tell us well i i was fortunate in that i at an early age appreciated the need to be focused in my professional pursuit so even while I was studying law, I sought employment at the chambers of one of the leading lawyers in Guyana, if not in the Caribbean, Mr. Dudnot Singh, senior counsel. I worked with him for a number of years. I was able to align myself with Dr. Fenton Ramsohoy very early in my career. And the exposure that I got uh, with those men um, were pheno phenomenal and have helped me tremendously in advancing my career. Being associated with those men exposed me to many, many important cases. And I had the privilege and benefit of appearing over the last 25 years in most of the, if not all, of the leading political constitutional cases in the country. And that's before I became Attorney General. And um, so I had that kind of exposure, being in the limelight, being in the press, and, and, and interrogating and researching and advocating in very important legal cases of national importance, which involved the high principles of public law and constitutional law, etc. So I had that grounding, and that catapulted me up the ladder very quickly and um you know since then i after those men would have died i assume my own role and 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 have led uh, have become the lead lawyer in my party and in the political well one of the lead lawyers in the political arena in all the important political constitutional cases of course i continue that trajectory as attorney general you are automatically named as a party in all the important political cases involving the constitution or elections, etc. So, um, so I, I, I have, I have that under, under, I, I have the benefit and, and the privilege of being afforded that great opportunity. Um, I appeared, for example, in Diana's first case at the Caribbean Court of Justice, in the Caribbean Court of Justice first case. I also appeared, and as the appellate level, I appeared in Guyana's and the court's first case in its original jurisdiction, that's the treaty jurisdiction, so that's two important distinctions that I have been able to accomplish. Um, I am reported widely in the West Indian law reports, in the Commonwealth law reports, of course in the Guyana law reports, and uh, some of the most memorable cases that I've done um, related to um, I mean, many, there are many, but, but of recent vintage, the, the disaster that we had after the March 2nd elections, where the then government refused to give up power, although they lost the elections. And we had to lead an, a national and international campaign, which a large part of it was fought in the courts. And I was um, one of the lead lawyers in that. Actually, I was the lead lawyer in Guyana, being led by Mendez, Douglas Mendez of Trinidad and Tobago most of the time. Um, and, and those are some of the most memorable cases that I appeared in and, and, and some of the most memorable cases that would have ever been decided in Guyana, even a hundred years down the, down the line. Um, they're important cases, important for democracy, important for the constitution, important for the rights and freedoms of Guyana and the Caribbean. They are going to be used to guide um, legal political impasse in the near and distant future. So um, 
as attorney general, it's 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 challenging, um, but I enjoy it. I am privileged that I'm in a government that gives me great latitude. My president has great confidence in me, so I I am allowed to work very freely. Um, I I have a we have in Guyana we have the most active legislative agenda I believe in the entire Commonwealth certainly in the Caribbean because we have to build this legal cradle that the economy this blossoming economy um, has to be situated in and that legal foundation is necessary um, and then of course I have to defend the government all the time in, in the courts and in the legal system um, I am also I have responsibility also I'm secretary for the defense board which is a very important um, statutory position. The Defense Board manages the National Army, and is, I am also a member of the National Security Council that deals with national security in the country. Um, I, am, uh, I am the minister responsible for EML, anti-money laundering, countering the financing of terrorism. Um, so, so it's a very big um, agenda a very heavy workload, but I, I enjoy it. It's, to me, it's not work. This is what I want to do. I enjoy doing it. So, you know, you enjoy that. You... I have a constituency that I have to answer to. And so it, it's good. It's exciting. It keeps you busy. It keeps me agile mentally and physically. And um, I, I enjoy doing it. And so it's I, an accomplishment. I, I, it's it's an accomplishment as a as a successful lawyer, uh, becoming uh, the attorney general of the country and the, and and working towards the development and the success in Guyana. Well, that is really amazing. That is really. Let me let me let me interrupt you to say this. It's a team effort, and a lot of people have played an important role. Um, in me achieving whatever I have achieved and I, I want to recognize that recognize them and put that on the public record wonderful so it, it, you know yeah. I have been I've been fortunate to have so many good things and good people around me and you know that has contributed significantly to whatever success I may have achieved well I must say uh, Mr. Tony that um you know the success and the achievement and the development taking place in Guyana is really really well known worldwide now because wherever I go people are like wow you guys are doing phenomenal I'm like and they're, they're, a lot of people you know people are brought in there Africa like I were recently in India and some lectures in Africa etc people you know they don't necessarily go too much in the details of the difference with Trinidad and Guyana so they would think oh so shake you from Guyana I'm like yeah well we all want people that came down but I live in in Trinidad because it's like a Caribbean person not knowing too much of the difference between a Pakistani and a Bangladesh or, or, or Indian I they think I, I, I appreciate that yeah I, yeah yeah you would have seen our president had a very uh, big delegation, including Trinidadians, to India recently and um, was awarded um, this prestigious award by uh, Prime Minister Modi. And we had several important commercial engagements and would have built many strategic alliances with, with investors and companies and agencies in India all that augurs well for economic and commercial advancement that is really nice that is really interesting and i'm sure that um guyana has a lot a lot in the world is hearing a lot about guyana now and the achievement and i'm sure you all will have a lot of more investors and uh, people who are interested so tell us we are coming to the end of the pro the show we got about two or three minutes again before we conclude what would you like to say in your closing remarks I would like to say that while we are experiencing all these successes that you are referring to, we cannot lose sight of the fact that we are still one of the poorest countries in the world. Our people are poor and we have so many uh, goods and services to deliver to bring our people up to an acceptable standard. I, I don't want to sit here and paint a picture that it is all hunky-dory. 
It's not. Guyana has come from the depths and bowels of poverty and will not be out of that instantaneously. It will take time. But Guyana has a government in place that recognizes that reality and that has the vision and a plan to deliver us from that to deliver us from that depth of poverty from which we have come and we are on our way to achieving that objective we work tirelessly in Guyana as a government and as a people we have an opposition who are not cooperative are not constructive I have always advocated for a vibrant responsive and responsible opposition who can put us under proper scrutiny who can hold us accountable unfortunately we have an opposition that is destructive and preaches racism hate and division all the time so we have to take that on board mm -hmm. that's the reality mm -hmm. and we are working with that every day we continue to extend a hand to them, whether they want to come on board or not. But that is not so important as uniting our people. We are a, a, a nation of six races, and every day our government is forging ahead with policies, with programs to address the concerns and address the needs of every single Guyanese, and at the same time, trying to build that united bond of one Guyana. Interesting. Well, uh, Honorable Attorney uh, General of Guyana and Minister of Legal Affairs, we thank you very much. I know you definitely 199% got a very busy schedule. We wanted to get you on the show approximately one year now. We were not able to because I know your schedule is very, very busy. Um, complicated a hectic one as we would say but thank god we got you on the show it's a blessing for you to come on board and be with us and definitely when we visit guyana we will pay you a visit and whenever you visit south florida feel free to pay us a visit it will be a pleasure to meet and to get to know each other in person as we say thank inshallah you. god will it <laughs> thank you very much and um i, I thank your technical team um, thank you for extending the invitation to me. I'm sorry I could not have done it earlier. And to your viewers once again, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. And to our viewers out there, thank you very much for tuning in to Al Hikmat TV. It was indeed a pleasure to have with us the Honorable uh, Mohabir Anil Nanlal, the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs of Guyana, South America. And always remember, stay tuned to Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says those people whose shugul, whose occupation is in learning Quran, teaching Quran, spreading the message of the Quran without asking Allah for anything, Allah grants it to them. Please, you know, as we live in this world, we can check how many businesses we have and how many accounts we have and how many properties we have. Let it be that the angels count how many Quran you distribute in the path of Allah. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars, ten Quran, thirty dollars, a hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Dai Dawa and Interfaith Institute presents for the first time in USA Dawa and Interfaith training with education in world religions from religious professors and spiritual leaders of different faiths. This is a six month weekend course designed for brothers and sisters local, national and international who are seeking to learn the importance of Dawa and better understanding of faith and cultures. For more information, please contact 1-800-804-0267 
or 954-986-0158. You can also contact via email at alhikmat at alhikmat.com or visit our website www.alhikmat.com. Linda M. Kaplan, PA, an immigration law firm. Over 40 years of legal services in immigration and naturalization matters. Contact her at 305-670-7665. Once again, 305-670-7665. Or email her at lk at lindacaplan.com or visit her website lindacaplan.com. You can also contact for more details the Al Hikmat office at 954-986-0158 or 1-800-804-0267. You can also reach out to them via email at alhikmat at alhikmat.com, the website www.alhikmat.com, and visit the Al Hikmat TV www.alhikmattv.com. Glass Supplies, specialized in French doors, windows, aquariums, putty work, and more. 45 Garth Road, Princess Town. For more information, please call at 1-868-736-6204. That is 1-868-736-6204. Or message on WhatsApp at 1-868-736-6204. 272-2302. Again, 1-868-272-2302 or email at jummasglass73 at gmail.com. Oh